At first glance, Hermeticism in the Art of Alchemy arises a euphoria of confused thoughts with the signs of abundant mystery. But why such confusion? All forms of operation are quite concise, even clear to the peruser of instruction manuals and guides. So we must ask, how have the alchemical practices fallen behind the veils of concealment? How have they become an ancient philosophical science instead of a fully expounded and easily deliverable methodology to the gates of spiritual wisdom? Surprisingly, the answer is quite simple. The majority of us, in our excitement and unwavered willingness to receive these wisdoms and understandings, have forgotten that we are engaging in a practice akin to precise experimentation, so far that we must know all of the components. We must know the points of engagement, the expectations, and more, to which the subconscious mind will thereafter take upon itself all necessary actions to produce the outcome, the resulting elevation and perfection, the arisal of gold. So we begin with the primary component, of which you already possess. You may presuppose that this elementary item is in the store, or behind some unknown yet ajar space, or even in the earth beneath your feet. However, it is much closer, much more immediate, and a strikingly resilient powerhouse of this ancient operation. And you may wonder, why the vessel? Why concern ourselves with an idea, an ambiguous single noun that seems ultimately lacking? It is because our experimentation requires a space to be performed. It requires a means to work out its ends. It needs a container. And this container is like any other housing to anything, active and volatile. It has, the container that is, all the means, requirements, and design to assist the natural acts and principles of interaction. It has the form necessary to carry out the work. For explanation on this matter, we can use direct observation. Imagine you're looking to heat an object, successfully. You might use, quite clearly, a heat source, likely fire, and this object you're heating is supposedly not all that wieldy by your own hand while heating it, thus you put it into something, a flask of sorts. But this flask and container to which it is contained isn't haphazard or random, it has the necessary design of shape, design of material all for the sake of producing this single outcome. Well, the alchemical process is rife with all manner of elements, and that we might need to heat something, we might need to distill something, or dissolve it. But what container, you may be wondering, can withstand all of these trials and tests? What container is the ultimate housing for our ends? Assuredly, there is but one such vessel. If we take note, that the hermetic philosophy and alchemical practice is centered around the individual, which in turn is centered around the whole of the cosmos, further then into the whole of all things, the answer becomes far more clear. Our operations, vessel, our answer, is the body. The housing of all faculties by which we can even begin to engage with this thing we call life. You might say. What foolishness is this that the body is the house of the operation? And if you thought this, well, guess what? You're right. The vessel is more rightly the state of conscious being and also the living experience. But we will be expanding on that later in this video. For now, let us discuss the body more fully and engender curiosity and aspiration, as I can think of no greater act than delivering a quickening of the spirit, the likes of which I had myself only years ago. For explanation on the vessel, let us go for quotation and the writings of Atwood, whereby we may address the subject so far. We find, Oh how wonderful, says the Arabian, is that thing which has in itself all things which we seek, to which we add nothing different or extract, only in the preparation of removing superfluities. You see, this quote is not light or of trifling matters. That thing which is wonderful is the body, the cosmos, and the whole, which has in itself all things, as in the components that we seek for this great art. Lo, it is true that we add nothing or subtract nothing, 
we only remove its superfluities from the lesser to raise it to the higher. The removal of superfluities is of the most ancient metaphors, and I'll share it as intended. Gold, silver, and the varieties of precious metal exist in their beautified state. Yet when they are taken from the dross, when they are mined from the earth, which in this case the earth represents physicality akin to materialism, they're quite ugly, impure, assuredly nothing like the gold and silver that we commonly know. However, after immense and astute temperance, they are brought forth from this state, they are heated and cooled to great extent, and arise a thing of beauty, coveted by their beholders. Let us now discuss another level, which is the living experience, the equivalent to the whole, more fully. We may ponder, is it not clear that there is a preliminary component, an obvious item of necessity to even begin to engage in the works of perfection? This necessary item is to be embodied, in this sense corporeal. Yes, but what is begot from this embodiment? It is the advent, the arrival, if you will, of our life in this space. This most precious thing, unbeknownst to most, the act of living, the literal existence of you. Therefore, you are free to engage and operate on these higher matters, because they are the matters of the sagacious men of renown, the movers and shakers of antiquity. Therefore, I welcome you, sagacious one, who has knocked on the doors of curiosity and has now clambered over the mountain of confusion into the first revelation of the alchemical art. Anyways, you may wonder... Why do I say that the vessel, being the body, is also akin to the cosmos and the whole of creation? Let us again turn to quotation. Philosophers have spoken sufficiently of all that is necessary concerning the work, with the exception of the vessel, which is a divine secret, hidden from idolaters, and without this knowledge no one can attain to the magistry. It is that living temple even that the universal orb of the earth contains not so great mysteries and excellences as man, and he that desires the primacy amongst the students of nature will nowhere find a greater reserve to obtain his desire than in himself. It then continues as necessary, If thou knowest how to know thyself, and art not of a stiff neck, mayst easily comprehend who are created after the likeness of the great world, yea, after the image of the divine, as in you are akin to the macrocosmic man. While we have little availability to discuss at length the more common Kabbalistic idea, we will turn to the primary hermetic concept quoting the Emerald Tablet, that which is above is like that which is below, to perform the works of only one thing. Now, I suggest for this final point, you focus. And if the freedom of interest is available to you, take it now so that you know some truth. Let us hear the whole of the matter by way of a simple example. This example involves three people. There's a neophyte, or common person, an adept, and a sage. The three such people are in similar regalia. The neophyte wears black, the adept a mixture of red and green, and the sage wears white. The three are standing together for the sake of learning, and the sage looks to the other two and asks, are you clothed in garb? The neophyte responds first, saying, I am clothed in black raiment. The adept excitedly interjects, he is clothed, but only in skin. The sage, hearing both their answers, remarks, you are clothed, true, yet in life and reason. The neophyte and adept, upon hearing this, note all the tears of their embodiment. A bit aloof, but persistent, the neophyte continues, Adam of Genesis donned the leaf of a fig tree to cover himself and that is his clothing. Almost immediately, the adept, ready to expand on his previous answer, responds, It is well known that this Adam was first made garments of skin. This is our true clothing. The sage again hearing both their answers leans forward for explanation. The advent of Adam. His sheer generation is a revealment of his being. Before he was clothed in a fig leaf, before clothed in skin, he was clothed in life generated by divine reason, which is his ultimate level of truth. Thus he is, in your explanations, doubly distant from this truth of himself. So now, with this explanation, we can finally finish our first inquiry. 
What is the vessel? It is the body and flesh, but all the operations of the alchemical art are only, as in, they are limited to being expressed, by the body. The operation, however, truly occurs in the mind. Therefore, it is the conscious and subconscious faculty that most directly houses all the alchemical art. Because without the mind, no distinctions or separations could even begin to unfold. Human would be animal, and all secrets would remain unrevealed without that perfect encasing of reason, as in a divine aspect of logic. This divine aspect of logic, this sense of high reason, life and golden, which is our aim, is called the Logos. That is all, pun intended. Alright, so before we go, I know many of you have expressed your interest in the practices, and we'll begin elucidating at once. One of the greatest components to initiation, the first realization if you will, is the subject we have just covered in this video. For simplicity's sake, here's what you do. When you're wondering about these topics and ask yourself, how does this apply to me? Remember the tiers. Remember the embodiment as a distinct item with levels, so far that you are not just your body or your conscious faculty, but you are you insofar as you exist. If we consider the famous quote from Descartes, I think, therefore I am, keep in mind that this level of philosophical proof is specific to the conscious faculty. He proved that he exists to himself because he is in a state of awareness. However, he forgot that he is capable of the conscious faculty, which is a preliminary component, in other words, living in and of itself. And this is the connection to the whole that must be fostered going forward. Freemasonry calls it the noble charity. Greeks the monad, and it is a step towards the Tao that can be known. Again, that is all. Pun intended. As always, a huge thanks to my supporters, friends, and patrons for helping to make all this possible. I appreciate you more than you know.